For a long time now, I have been on a mission. That mission was to find a decent quality, low-cost Geiger counter. Just like the search for the Loch Ness Monster, I have received false reports and spurious information. Despite numerous failures to find my prize, I have persisted, and pushed on. Constantly fighting a headwind of the cheap and nasty. And yet, once again, here I am reviewing a cheap Chinese Geiger counter. This, is the Bosian FS5000. It costs $48, and I think, just perhaps, I have finally found what I have been looking for. Okay, so this product does have a nice box, but you can't judge a book by its cover. Or even, by its rather nice quick start guide. No, products need to be tested and rated based upon their price for performance ratio. Let's start by looking at what it is claimed that this product is able to do. This product is a Geiger counter, not a spectrometer or a scintillation counter. This means that at its heart, is a Geiger Muller tube. This particular one, is sensitive to beta, gamma and X-ray radiation. The stated dose rate range for this device, is from 10 nanosieverts, to 50 millisieverts per hour. This is a far wider range than that of most of the cheap devices that I have tested. The product is sensitive to gamma radiation in the range, of 48 kilo electron volts, to 1.5 MeV. With a sensitivity of 60 counts per minute, for every microsievert per hour, of a cobalt 60 source. None of these specifications are exceptional, and many contemporary products have some of the same specifications, but, this device, is good all across the board. This product is powered from a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, with an 1800 mAh capacity. In the standard mode of operation, the device consumes an average of 15 mA, and so achieves a 5-day battery life. I have tested this myself, and I actually found that after 5 days, I still had about 30% of the battery capacity remaining. There is also a long endurance mode, which claims a 30-day battery life. The product has a bright and clear, backlit TFT display, which is readable, even in direct sunlight. There is also a bar graph display mode. The last product that I reviewed also had a great display, but the firmware engineers seem to have been too lazy to implement this basic, but useful function. The product can display dose rates in sieverts or as counts per minute, but there are no older, non-metric units available. So, the old farts, like me, will just have to get used to it. And the product uses a simple three-button user interface. Unlike many of the cheap Chinese counters, this device features particle clicks. It might seem strange to mention this, but a surprising number of products, including the best-selling one on Amazon, don't include this feature. And then, there is what I consider to be the best feature of this device, the PC application. This allows historical dose rate data to be downloaded to the computer, and saved for presentation in Excel. This is a feature that many Geiger counters, simply do not have, and certainly not on products that cost less than $50. In the past, I have been led down the garden path by other products, that appear good on paper but then turn out to be pretty shitty in testing. So, without further ado, I will get on and put this sucker through its paces. As usual, I will start with a measurement of background radiation levels. In this test I am comparing with the Radia Code 102, and with Amazon's most popular Geiger counter, the GC01. This is the instantaneous dose rate, and here is the average value. This figure at the bottom, is the total recorded dose. 
For the purposes of this testing, I am looking at the average value. As you can see, the average value tracks well with the radio code gamma ray spectrometer. It is also clear that the instantaneous values do not bounce around wildly, like the GC01. Now, I am testing using my thorium-232 test source. This is made from bits of snake oil, bullshit, scalar energy pendants. Just imagine, you can hang one of these wonderful pieces of crap around your neck, and even pay for that privilege. How nice! In general, sources like this, that emit a major part of their decay energy as beta particles, will read quite high on the FS5000, I will explain why that is later. Now, I am measuring an americium 241 source, which was taken from an old smoke detector. The values for the dose rate that this device measures, are pretty consistent with what I would expect, although perhaps, it is a little higher than some of my other cheap detectors. This is a sample of radium paint, taken from an old Soviet military compass. The beta component of this source is very strong, and this detector is actually pretty sensitive to beta particles, more sensitive in fact, than any of the cheap detectors I have previously tested. As you can see when I speed up the measurement, the average tracks very well, and I found it gives a good consistent measurement. This is a sample of natural uranium ore. We found it, when my family and I, went scrumping at an old disused uranium mine, right here in China. Again, this sample is a majority beta emitter, and the detected dose rates are in line with my expectations. This is my sealed, test source of cesium-137. It is not a particularly strong source, but it is a very useful one. This is often used to calibrate instruments, such as this. Cesium-137 undergoes beta decay, but also emits a gamma ray at 661 kV. It is this gamma line that is used for calibration. The next thing that I am going to do, is to test the response to low energy X-rays. The product specification says that the lower detection limit for photons, is 48 kV, but I am testing with a soft X-ray source. This has a very low energy bound, around 11 kilo electron volts, but nevertheless, the FS5000 is still detecting this radiation. It is by no means guaranteed that any low cost Geiger counter can do this. Here I am repeating the test with another counter, which is even closer to the X-ray source, but generates absolutely zero response to this radiation. The FS5000 is still detecting this radiation, even after it has passed all the way through this crappy HFS-10 product. And finally, this is my strongest source. This is a check source of strontium-90, and it is very bright. It is a strong beta source that I use for conducting experiments with beta particles, and also for testing if counters like this, will overrange when exposed to strong sources of radioactivity. Many of the counters I have tested in the past, have not been able to measure levels that are this intense. They either measure some arbitrary lower level, or they saturate at their maximum reading. As far as I am concerned, this condition is acceptable, after all every instrument has a finite measurement range. But, what is totally unacceptable, is to display zero when the device over ranges, like this piece of shit, Gamma Scout does. However, the FS5000 appears to correctly display the dose rate, from this intense source. As I mentioned earlier, this device appears to have more beta sensitivity, than many of the cheap devices available. I think that the reason for this is twofold. Firstly, the GM tube is in close proximity to the product enclosure. Secondly, there are openings in the back of the product that directly expose the GM tube to the outside world. This means that even lower energy beta particles will be measurable. The downside of this, is that the device can easily become contaminated, 
if measuring powders or soil. In this case, I would simply cover the opening with some tape, as this will have negligible effect on the measurement. Better still, you can just place the unit in a Ziploc bag, when there is a risk of contamination. The first thing I noticed, as I opened this product up, was that there are no self-tapping screws in the device. Every single one is a standard machine screw thread, and there are brass threaded inserts, molded into the plastic case to accept the screws. The main component of this product, is the Geiger Muller tube, this is the actual part that does the radiation detection. This is a J321 tube, and of the low-cost tubes that the manufacturer could have chosen, this is probably the best choice. The beta and gamma sensitivity, is about as good as you can get for a low cost. Here is the high voltage power supply for the Geiger Muller tube. Although it looks pretty standard, later, you will understand why this one is way better, than the average type that is designed into this kind of product. This is the battery charger. And here is the main power supply for the system electronics. This unpopulated part of the PCB is for future features. The manufacturer was very open with me when I asked about this part, they are considering an option for an electromagnetic radiation sensor. Personally, I think that this space could be used for better features, but I will talk about that later. Looking at the back of the board, you can clearly see the TFT display. And here is the other part of the high voltage power supply for the Geiger Muller tube. This part is the feedback section, that allows closed loop control over the final output voltage. Normally, the closed loop control, assuming that there is any, is done before the multiplier stack. Directly measuring the actual tube voltage, results in a much more stable radiation measurement, both over environmental conditions, and also over device-to-device -device tolerance. This is a USB to UART converter, this allows the device to communicate with the PC. Here, is the part that creates the system sounds. This part here, allows the product to provide alerts, via vibrations. These are the three keys, and here are the LEDs for the alerts and to indicate count events. Now, looking under the display, there are some other important components that are revealed. Most importantly, there is the MCU. Normally in cheaper Geiger counters, this is just some SD micro clone of an M0 processor. In the FS5000, there is an original SD micro MCU. Not only that, but a pretty heavyweight, M4 core with a floating point option, and has all of the bells and whistles. This has got a lot of additional processing capabilities available for possible future upgrades. There is also a flash memory, to store the dose rate data. And finally, this is the connector for the display. This is an interesting product. The build quality reminds me a lot of the Misol KC761. It is nice to see the new crop of smaller Chinese brands that are focused on delivering quality products. These small brands, don't have the financial clout of the likes of Huawei, Xiaomi or DJI, but they seem to share the same ethos. The first thing to clarify is that in this review, I am comparing the FS5000 with other similarly priced Geiger counters. It is sort of unfair to try and compare this with a Radia Code 103, after all, you can buy nearly 7 of these products for the same price as just one of the Radia Codes. So, let's look first at the product highlights. For a cheap Geiger counter, this device has a very good sensitivity to beta, gamma and even soft x-rays. I think that the next feature, might be unique for a sub $50 counter, which is having a PC application that can be used to download the dose rate data. If I am wrong about that, please feel free to correct me in the comments. 
And finally, there is the easy to use, simple user interface. In combination with the bright TFT display, this results in a pretty nice user experience. Now, I need to talk about the more shitty aspects of this product. I am going to be honest, I really had to dig deep, just to find three things that are suboptimal. Starting with the PC application, it is pretty basic and a little clunky. Perhaps the company should contract outside experts to create a more polished version of this software. Next, there is the holes in the case that could easily allow particulate contamination to enter the product. These holes should be sealed. And finally, whilst the reaction time of the device is about average for this type of counter, it isn't top of the class, and frankly I really want to show that I found at least three negative aspects of this product. Okay, so, finally it is time to award some stars. So, it seems that I have finally found my rainbow shitting unicorn. Whenever I review products like this, where the manufacturer is clearly wanting to make a good product, then I like to offer some suggestions for improvements. Who knows, maybe they will take some of this advice. The first suggestion is for improving the bar graph. Instead of just using a single color, to visually show the dose rates, perhaps the levels can use traffic light colors, to indicate the level of danger. The thresholds could be based upon the alarm settings, or even some international standards. My next suggestion, is to allow the user to set the data logging sample rate. Currently this is set for a sample every 2 seconds, but with the limitations of the memory size, this only allows for about 3 and a half hours of data collection. This should be extended, at the very least, be able to cover a normal working day. Ideally, the user will set the desired compromise between the data collection rate, and the duration that data can be collected for. There is no reason why this cannot be set in both the device menu system, and also the PC application. The next suggestion is just a minor point. If you want this product to be taken seriously as a professional instrument, then it needs to be calibrated on the production line and supplied with a certificate, that shows this calibration value. I have worked on projects, in quite literally, hundreds of Chinese factories, and I know exactly what the actual value of this piece of paper is. It literally means nothing. This is what a real calibration certificate looks like. My next suggestion, relates to the holes in the back of the device for the Geiger Muller tube. These should be covered over, perhaps adding a thin metallized mylar sheet. This will prevent contamination entering, and also might create a nice visual feature. If the sound port had a waterproof mesh and an o-ring was added between the two halves of the casing, then this device could probably be rated, as having some level of waterproofing. My final suggestion, is to add a Bluetooth data link to a smartphone application. The up cost, to the bill of materials, would be less than $2, but it would quite literally enable a huge amount of additional functionality. Not only that, a smartphone application is a great way to interact with your customers. The smartphone offers, effectively limitless storage capacity, and geolocation features can be added. Once you have a solid application in place, you could build out to all kinds of data analysis features, without adding any hardware costs. Anyway, that's just my tuppence worth of advice. That is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed my little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of video, you could always press the subscribe button. This is not a commercial channel, nor will it ever be, so I can say what I want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get f***ed. Thank you for your time.